um, today, and I think there's many correlations between you know, gold and silver and Bitcoin that's produced from a proof of work. I'm not too sure of the proof of stake operation, but certainly proof of work, there's many uh, similarities. Yes, uh, Bitcoin is based on proof of work. And this means um, uh, you have to invest some, some work, some energy in, in the product, Bitcoin. And uh, so this is basically the intrinsic value of Bitcoin. People are often asking, what is behind Bitcoin? Why has Bitcoin a value? We know Bitcoin is basically an open, open source ledger, a worldwide open source ledger. And um, behind Bitcoin, we have uh, here one example. This is one piece or one part of a so-called miner. It's a hardware, a computer hardware. And um, we have worldwide right now a huge amount of hardware that is powered by a huge amount of electricity permanently to keep the network secure. And this is basically um, that what is standing behind Bitcoin, the intrinsic value. Because if somebody would like to cheat or to get in the situation to cheat in the network of Bitcoin, you would have to have more than 51% of the network. So this means you would have, hundred, would have to have one, hundreds of megawatts of, of electricity power and uh, to be able to, to make any, uh, any strange things in the network. Bitcoin Extremes is, is, is extremely secure. Um, in since seven years, there is no single failure, basically no single proof of, of cheating or something like this. It's, it's, it's so exciting. And, um, and I suppose if I go back, being a gold and silver person, for many people you know, who, who uh, certainly know me, I'm a, I'm a licensed gold trader in Dubai. I've been running the Swiss company since 2008, and we ship physical precious metals around the, to over 40 countries. Um, there's many similarities. It took me a while to get my mind around from the physical stuff to a digital, to digital deal in one sense, but certainly the proof of work, it, it's, it's certainly very, very exciting. But I think it's a natural progression of, 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 of how money is created. I mean, money is created in the free, from a free market, historically in cycles. Everything goes in cycles. And I really think that you know, this ingenious concept of Bitcoin, decentralized system blockchain, um, money in one sense has really come out of the, of the dissatisfaction of a decentralized system, a system that's really designed to transfer wealth away from the people back to the centralized system. So, you know, I think, uh, what, what's the guy's name? Satoshi? Nakamoto. Nakamoto, thank you. Uh, or his team, whoever it was, we don't really know who that is, it's truly ingenious in what they've actually, Definitely. Uh, what they've actually achieved. And when I look at you know, the gold and silver. When I look at paper, for example, you know, I've got some, um, probably some euros here and some, and some Swiss francs. I mean, it's paper. It probably costs about a half a cent to produce one of these, regardless of, of the face value of the paper. Yes, but you know, for sure, this is the smallest part or smallest, smallest amount of money available in the world right now. The biggest part is even more. Uh, you can't see it. You can't see it. Yeah. They just created out of nothing. Well, money's yeah. created from debt, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. money, money yes. is loaned into yes. existence, yes. Yes. you know. And, uh, of course, this is, this, is, this is what really keeps people enslaved to the system. We're actually, in one sense, enslaved to the monetary system. So I think it's, it's through the dissatisfaction of our monetary system that brought the ingenious concept of Bitcoin to actually the table because it's, a, you know, it's divisible. Yeah. It's a medium of exchange. It's fungible. It's got all the characteristics. Mm -hmm. And I believe with the proof of work... It even has a store of value, as you just ex explained Definitely. a little bit earlier I, on. I, I would say uh, that the, the, the biggest, uh, biggest thing about Bitcoin is the store of value. Because we definitely, it's an open source network. Everybody in the network knows, so everybody knows how mm -hmm. many Bitcoins do exist, how many are created day by day. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the fiat money world, nobody knows how much money exists in reality. Nobody. So I... Uh, it's trillions, it's completely, but we don't know. Yeah. Yes, but we don't know exactly. Yeah. And this is why, why Bitcoin has a huge um, potential. Uh, uh, it draws a lot, of course. People say Bitcoin rose so much, it can't go higher. Just one comparison. If you take the value, you are into gold. If you take the, the value of the total gold worldwide and, uh, and exchange, would exchange this value or transform it into 21 million Bitcoins that, that will ever exist, one, one Bitcoin should be around $700,000 or $800,000 per, per Bitcoin. So right now we are at $750. So there is definitely some, some room or space to go up. 
And uh, we know it's an open source network. You can see all transactions. We see that every day there's more and more transactions on the network. That means more and more people want to have Bitcoin, use Bitcoin in a daily life. And we know on the other side, it's absolutely limited and protected by hardware and electricity. And so we know the price has to go up, definitely. I think there's about 14 million bitcoins already mined, it, is that it's, right? It's more, it's something like 60 or 70 million. I don't know the number exactly. It's 1,800 bitcoins per day that are newly created. And um, what is also very interesting in the bitcoin uh, algorithm is that every four years, the amount of bitcoins that are produced is, is, is halved. So uh, we had in 2016, this year, a couple of months ago, we had 3,600 bitcoins per day produced. And then, in, I think it was in July, uh, in one moment, the production was cut off by 50%. And now it's 1,800. And it's, in 2020, it will be 900 Bitcoins per day. And every four years, it's half and half, uh, more, uh, less and less and less by 50%. Which, which is completely different to what central banks are doing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they're actually they're increasing. I think the European Central Bank might be printing 40 or 50 billion uh, uh, euros per month. You have uh, Japan, uh, China also, of course, and then they're expanding the they're amount. expanding the yeah. monetary supply, which means Correct, yeah. this stuff here, this paper stuff, you're going to need a lot more of it. In fact, whatever I have here, whether it's you know euros, in the next eight to nine years, I'm going to need double than this to buy the same amount of goods and services. Mm -hmm. The same as Swiss francs or any other fiat currency. I think one one interesting point for people who, who are new to Bitcoin is to mm -hmm. understand. People often ask me. How is it possible there are only 21 million pieces? Will it be enough for the whole world? Yes, it will be definitely enough because every, every single Bitcoin is, can be cut into smaller pieces by default to 1 million pieces. It's, uh, the smallest unit is called bit and 1 million bits is, is 1 Bitcoin. Tell me, um as a novice in this game, who's really, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty excited about it also, how I can really help people change their lives uh, going forward, understanding the monetary system. Well, and that's really an important part too, is the education of understanding the monetary system. If we understand the monetary system, we can make right decisions as well and, pres and, and, and preserve our wealth and benefit from this, from this knowledge. But is there times where you think it's better just to buy Bitcoin outright versus mining? What is, do you see any correlations or... or at times we should be buying or versus mining. What, do you see there's a different group of people here? Um, basically, we, we have a lot of times these questions. Uh, what is better to just buy Bitcoin or to mine Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the reality is uh, both are every investment, some kind of, this is investment. Every investment is some kind of bet. Yeah? It's, uh, I would say in, in terms of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is seven years old. It has proven it works. It is a pretty secure bet. And then it's a question. Uh, what is the better bet, to buy Bitcoin or to mine Bitcoin? And honestly, uh, I, I would uh, recommend anybody to, if, if you want to, max, uh, to, to make an investment in, in the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, uh, make it 50-50. Invest 50% directly in Bitcoin and 50% in Bitcoin mining. And I think uh, both will be very good in, in the long run. Yeah, it's, a great, it's great advice. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah, it's a bit like us. I mean, and even with your with your packages that you provide us, and, and uh, we're really grateful as a company that we're plugged into uh, into the Genesis, uh, huge farming in, in one's global farming that you offer. People can get started from as little as thirty dollars. Yes, correct. Yeah. And, and this, I think, is absolutely fantastic. The same as us, people can get started with us buying gold, real gold, certified physical gold, from as little as twenty five dollars per month, uh, and we physically ship it. With you, you're offering people able to get involved from as little as thirty dollars into mining so they can, you know, they can set up a, a Bitcoin address wallet, they can, they can get engaged, they can get educated through the process for really minimum of risk. And we had one lady from Queensland, Australia yesterday who's been with us now uh, six or seven years. Hi Shirley, she'll know that I speak out to her. I mean, she wanted, you know, she's got, uh, she's been with us saving in physical gold and some silver for a long, long, long time. And she sent a, a message uh, to us wanting to know, can she set up um, some accounts Bitcoin mining for her grandchildren. She wants to set up, you know, fifty dollar accounts for her six or seven grandchildren that she actually has.
Jacob, one of the other interesting things um, which I like very much about the Genesis Mining Company is that you offer multiple different contracts for different types of um, cryptocurrencies. Um, but in respect to the, to the Bitcoin contract, it's a, it's a lifetime contract, which means it has zero maturity date. Now, for people who, um, you said you know, there's always risk associated with things, maybe you'd like to touch on this a bit. Yes, of course. Uh, we call our contracts for Bitcoin mining lifetime contracts because we take money, we buy hardware, plug it into, uh, uh, connect it to the electricity and to the internet, and these machines are supporting the Bitcoin network and producing Bitcoin and uh, making the or uh, doing the Bitcoin uh, transactions also, and um, this is generating income. But this income is limited uh, with, a, with a worldwide competition in Bitcoin. And this means worldwide people are trying to mine Bitcoin because they understand it. But uh, there is only one big piece of cake that is produced by day. So all these people have get just a share of this cake per day. So the more, the more hash power is arising worldwide, the smaller your piece of cake gets on the one side. On the other side, the piece what you get has a market value, and this market value is also fluctuating. So you have some, so you basically produce something virtually, digitally, that has a market value on the one side, and you have an investment or costs fees, a daily fees, and kind. Of, basically, it's most, most part is the biggest part is electricity, that has to cover, has to be covered. So you have to 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 sell every day a small piece of that what you have produced to cover the costs. And these costs rise by nature through time. So in one point of time in the future, nobody knows when it will be because you have a lot of influence, market, mm -hmm. market price, uh, hash rate, difficulty and so on, new technologies arising. Uh, in, in the long run, uh, these contracts will not be lifetime contracts. It will end in a couple of years. But nobody knows exactly when, when the date will be and when it expires. So uh, basically, imagine you buy this hardware, you plug it in at, at home, it runs, and in one point of time, this, this hardware is consuming more electricity that, than you are getting into bit, from Bitcoins in value. So you will just plug it, uh, shut it off and buy Bitcoin directly from the money would you, you would pay for electricity, right? And this is basically what we are doing with the lifetime contracts. As long as, as uh, the income that is generated uh, covers the costs, it is profitable more than to buy Bitcoin directly. And if, if these expenses are higher than that what is produced, then we have to shut down the contracts. Okay, so I get this. So for our listeners, who were pretty much precious metals people, gold and silver people, in one sense, I've had, if I had a physical gold mine, it's my, my uh, stake of the gold mine, and I've got my capital, my machinery there, my, my labor in there working for it, and all of a sudden, 10 other groups of people who are outside my operation wanted to, want to also mine for the same amount of gold there. Mm -hmm. Of course, the amount we're getting out, we're getting more out each day, but uh, I'm getting probably less because there's other people taking some as well. Correct. Uh, and then, of course, it's getting more difficult as well because the more it comes out, we're going to hit granite, we're going to hit different things, so it'll get to a point where it's not going to be worth mining any, any particular point where I might just go and buy the gold and silver. So I, I see that would be the same. It's with, pretty similar. Pretty similar to, yeah. um, to what you're saying about uh, Bitcoin as well, because obviously these thousands of units consume a huge amount of um, power, and at the same time you've got uh, other people plugging into doing their mining as well. It's a worldwide competition, yes. really. It's a worldwide competition, and this worldwide competition creates the, the basically the first natural money for the internet. It is also, you have to understand that uh, Bitcoin is, uh, is, is transported through the internet. Right now, if you buy something at Amazon or eBay or some, some other shop in the internet, you have one channel for the information, but you use a second channel, a different channel for payments. It's a banking. And uh, in, with Bitcoin, you have the same channel for information and for payment. And it's also pretty amazing. It's, it's incredible. It's the first time in, first time in history.